Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, host of Sister Power. Today, we will have a conversation with psychologist Alana Coffey. Alienation and estrangement, conscious communication and accountability. Typically discussed in family cases, but not limited, alienation is a deliberate attempt by one person to distance others from another. Estrangement refers to the behavior one does that directly creates distance without the assistance of another of another. Sister Powers VIP guest, Dr. Alana Wade Coffey. Dr. Coffey provides individual, family, and group cognitive behavior therapy for adults and adolescents. She has worked extensively with victims of domestic violence and sex abuse with patients experiencing depression, anxiety, and trauma. She has taught anger management, parenting, and self-esteem skills, worked in interdisciplinary teams of psychiatrists, social workers, nurses, and primary care physicians. Dr. Coffey, welcome to Sister Power. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So glad you're here. Finally. <laughs> Finally. After all of these months, we've I been know. trying for so long. Like Sharon, me, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hi, hi. But, you know, I always say, if you want to get something done, give it to a busy woman. Right. <laughs> it gets done. It gets so how done. was your day today? It was great. It was busy, but it was great. I'm glad to be here. Started off with clients. Um, Right up until about the time I walked in, so yeah. Oh my yeah, yeah. goodness. Well, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Uh, I grew up in Hawaii. I, my family is here. Um, I'm wedged between parents, uh, myself, my husband, my kids. Um, so there are about three generations of us here in Honolulu. I did all my schooling here from Eva Beach Elementary all the way up through Waianae Middle, Radford. I went to every college on the island, LCC, KCC, U8, Chaminade. Finally got through um, about last month, it seems. But yeah, wow. in here, yeah. Dr. Alana Coffey. <laughs> and it, May is Mental Awareness Month? Yes, yes. I think that probably every day. I mean, what we're trying to do is have every day be mental health awareness time. Like we want to be mindful every day. But, you know, in May, we have a lot of conversations about really honoring the health and the illnesses of the mind. We spend a lot of time worrying about our bodies, but not enough, nearly enough on our mind and our spirit. I was just watching a video just recently and what struck a chord with me, the doctor, I think Dr. Kelly said, be well within. Yeah, yeah. And I said, we don't think about, in the mind, the brain, that's within. It is within. You know, I think because we're, um, sort of a, a group herd animal. You know, humans are not individual creatures. Mm. So we often judge our well-being by how we're getting along, how well we're getting along with others. So we spend a lot of time as a result thinking about other people and maybe not quite enough about thinking about ourselves as individuals. Now, I do not think that people should become, you know, very individualistic or selfish thinking, but a little bit more time spent on what you know, what's concerning us, what's making us happy, what's bothering us. Because when we stuff all that, it actually spills out into the environment anyway. So a little bit of time spent uh, reflective is good. Yeah, well, if you're not well, if you're not taking care of yourself, it's really hard to, to take care of someone else. Yes, yes. I actually, Jerry, my husband and I started this work. I first worked with children. Um, and then at about, I don't know, maybe eight years in, I was like, you know, wait a minute, the children are mostly fine. They're fine. So then I, I changed my, the focus of my practice to really work with the adults and parents specifically. Well, yeah. I did read somewhere that you do Keiki Talk yeah, on yeah. KHON too. Yes, once a month. Once a month. Yes, that, Tell that's us about been that. Fun. It's been maybe about three years going. And I started this work many years ago when I was at Kaiser Permanente. Leslie Wilcox recruited me just to do a little bit of talking on the news. And then maybe about three years ago, I was approached by Ron Musitani. And he said, come and, you know, talk to us and talk with us about kids. And um, I thought it was a great opportunity just to bring some information to the community. And you know, people call in after the show and they're like, can you tell me more about that? And what I've noticed is that I've been able to maybe place people up to different services, not necessarily my service, but other services. So, hickey talk, it's been fun. All right, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What 
was your most challenging case in the past and how did you accomplish a suitable outcome? <laughs> Whoa, just jump in there. <laughs> yeah, let's just, just dig right on in. Uh, uh, you know, it, it depends. You know, it's really my most difficult case this week or each day because many of them each day are difficult. And, and the, what makes it difficult to me is when um, they're so, so hurt that um, it takes longer than I would like for them to start feeling better because it's a process. And so sometimes people come to therapy and they're like, I need to feel better right now. But their feelings, the injury has been so long, it's oh. been years. And, you know, one session, five, 12 sessions is not enough. So some of the hurts that come in, you know, of course, the child abuse cases are very, very painful. But most recently, I've been seeing a lot of cases where the parents are getting a divorce and um, the children are feeling deeply divided. And, and then, you know, the parents of the divorcing parents are involved. And I've got one eight-year-old child that's just like, I think I'll run away because I don't know. Everything I do will make somebody upset and angry with me. And that's heartbreaking. I'm and sure it is. You know, we had such a wonderful conversation this week about parenting and yeah. about the divorce yeah. and the, the mother's side and the father's side. Yeah. And I love when you came up with alienation and estrangement, conscious communication and accountability. Just embark on that a little right, more and expand right. on that for us. So if I could, I mean, you know, alienation is if I tell you, hey, Sharon, you and I, we're going to, we, you know, I don't want you to like John because John did X, Y and Z to me. Never mind that John hasn't done much to you, but I'm going to tell you how you're supposed to feel about John. This is a case of alienation. And it's not really fair to you because we teach you and we teach our children, make your own choices and make, have your own mind about things, right? And don't be uh, peer pressured. Yet sometimes we go ahead and try to peer pressure a child into believing one way or another. Um, they have their own relationship with everybody. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with my relationship with John. It has to do with how you are with John. Now, sometimes John just acts strange and might estrange himself from you without any of my assistance by me being disrespectful or not being accountable in communication or you know, scaring or being threatening. So in that case, you can feel however you want about John. Mm. And so one of the things I try to talk about regularly is we need to be careful about um, the insinuations and the implications that we tell a person about another person. That is so on point. That's very important because you do find that not just with children, adults, we do that to one another. It's in the workplace. It's and in the we, workplace. It's in the workplace. We call that ethical communication. It's when, you know, people around the water cooler talk and stink about somebody. And, you know, that's just... The damage done, at first it seems like, oh, I just got that off my chest, mm. you know, but the damage done is deep. You know, people get isolated and withdrawn and hurt. And those are adults. Imagine what's happening for children when that happens. So that's the part where the accountability part comes in. If I say, you know, Sharon, I had a run in with John and my feelings are hurt about John. Yeah. That's me owning it. I'm not telling you what to do. And so that's a little different. Yeah. I like that. I think that we should expand on that more because if people just told the truth about what happened, you know, from their perspective, yeah. and it's, I guess it's your deliverance to that person and not yeah. downing that person because we all are not going to like each other, right? but we right. can respect one another. Yes, yes. And we make mistakes. Yeah. And so, you know, John may have just made a mistake that day, but if I set it up that that's who he is all the time permanently, that's where the damage comes to him. You know, um, if I make a mistake in that, I need to be accountable and say, hey, you know, when I said that about that person, don't you don't have to believe me. You know, you have your own experience with that person. I like you that. Know? I like yeah. that. And so what about the, this is how we alienate? Is this the alienation that you're speaking of? Yes. Yes. What yes. about estrangement? So estrangement, you know, the golden rule where I treat you the way you want to be, or the way I want to be treated? Yes. Well, that's well and good. But the platinum rule is I treat you the way you want to be treated. It's, that's much more powerful. So if you ah, tell me- Say that again. Okay, so the golden rule that we all grew up with is treat others the way you want to be treated. Well, what if I like hugs all the time? 
And I go around offering people hugs all the time because that's what feels good to me. But you don't like hugs. Mm. And I come in your space and hug you because I think that's the golden rule. The platinum rule is, Sharon says, you know, I'd rather have a handshake or a high five. It's uncomfortable for me. Once you tell me that, then it's, then it's my job to honor you that way. And if I continue to give you a hug, that's a kind of disrespect. Oh, and see, I'm a hugger. Me too. I really am. I am a hugger. Me too, we're going to get along great. Absolutely. All this, the handshake is good. I think, you know, on a professional basis, you're coming in, you're coming into a business meeting, and you're meeting. Well, how do you find out what that person, when you first meet them, and you're trying to get to know them, how do you go about finding what the boundaries are? The boundaries, yeah, Yeah, what the boundaries are. That's a communication piece. And, you know, when we just start communicating loosely, it's not awkward anymore. So it's like you want a hug, a high five, or a handshake. It's a quick thing. And a person's like, thanks, I get to choose. If we are weird about it, you know, then it becomes awkward. But we can just ask, how would you like to be treated? And if I forget, please remind me, because I'm so forgetful. But yeah. Oh, I like that, because a fist bump will do too, you know, especially when you're just meeting a person. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Which are the most common disorders you have treated and how have you approached them right right so i'm a general a generalist so a psychologist that practice in a general way so i don't specialize in things like eating disorder or substance abuse or any of those kind of things although those things certainly come into our office but really i see a lot of depression and uh, i know and a lot of stress and anxiety these are maybe 80 percent or more of my case population and um, there's just a lot that people have to deal with and some of these uh, disorders are biological both uh, depression and anxiety we see in family lines so we know that it can be an endogenous trait it's just something that you know auntie has it uncle has it It just kind of follows in in the family line but most of it is situational Uh, it gets triggered it's expensive to live here people have a lot of financial stress of course, our divorce rate, again, is 50% or higher. That gives, it's a lot of stress. And we have an, a wonderful way of living multiculturally here. And that means that there's a lot of negotiation and navigation around each other's differences and similarities. And so when people have challenges in communication, that sometimes causes them stress because they want to guess, how am I supposed to act instead of just asking, right? Just asking. Yeah. Well, all of this is going on. And- what do you do to relax? <laughs> well, tinker. Well, I, you tinker. I tinker. You tinker. Uh, yeah. Because we have some beautiful, you, yeah. you, you do sculpting. I do sculpting. And um, that's one of your yeah. pieces. Tell us about that piece oh, That's there. Oberon. And Oberon is a sculpt over foam. And I just added some clay and made some horns, a nose, a chin, and then mosaic on top of Oberon. And, and Oberon was at the time that my son was doing a lot of Shakespeare with this theater group called Hawaii Young Actors Ensemble. This is a shout out to Eden Lee, who does another type of mental health work with kids, and she does Shakespeare, really cla- very classy Shakespeare education with kids. So that was my nod to that theater group that year. Well, yeah. we will... <laughs> We have more to talk about, Uh, and we'll come right back and pick up where we left off. Okay. All right. Aloha. I'm Stan Osterman, a host here on Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness here on the island. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Mahalo. Aloha and welcome to At The Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. I'm live at five every Wednesday where we have entertaining and educational conversations that are real and relevant both here in Hawaii and across the globe. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha.
Welcome back to Sister Power. This is exciting. <laughs> uh, we have a, we're having a conversation with psychologist Alana Coffey. And the conversation has been very interesting. And I've learned a lot just in these few minutes speaking with you. So let's move forward. Okay. Because we were talking about um, alienation and estrangement. Yeah, yeah. When someone comes in, what can they expect? Right, right. That's a really good question because I think I'd like to demystify, you know, therapy. Um, again, it's, you know, if you go to a doctor's office, you call, make an appointment, park, come in, and then people start worrying, oh my gosh, what's going to happen yeah. when they come in? But, you know, it's a lot easier talking to us than a medical doctor. We don't do shots. We don't take your temperature. We don't weigh you. What we do, though, in order to assess where the hurt is, is we ask a lot of questions and some of those questions are a questionnaire, and some of them are just the conversation like what you and I are having. It's a, you know, it's a back and forth, just an, a discussion. And, um, and part of that is so that people begin to feel more comfortable. We want them to feel comfortable with the space. Uh, my office kind of looks like a messy living room, sort of. That's what I've been told. But, you, oh, know, okay. you know, the space, you know, we just want people to feel comfortable because when they begin to talk about their hurt, there tends to be a lot of shame because I think people are being... Um, taught that they should not hurt and that they should be brave and just suck it up. And in fact, some of the bravest people I know are afraid and scared. They just do it anyway. They're still brave, but they, we don't like to talk about weaknesses and vulnerabilities. So when people come in, I know the therapists in our group, we're all very careful to try to honor those vulnerabilities and not pick at them and really help people see how actually courageous and strong they are just by walking through our door. Wow, that's yeah. wonderful. So you feel at home when the, when yeah. we come to visit, to see you. Yes. What variables, issues are of concern to you in working with specific populations? Right, right. Um, probably the biggest one is violence and domestic abuse. Um, very concerned because I do work with couples that when they leave my office, they don't continue the session and then get themselves in an argument that they don't yet have skills to get out of. So um, we, we're concerned with the safety, physical safety of folks. And also sometimes people want to come in and talk about a huge trauma in their life. And if I know that they don't have very good coping skills, I might try to slow down that conversation. Um, I don't want them to, you know, excite themselves and then go home and drink a bunch of vodka because they were, you know, so agitated in the 40-minute session that we had or the 50-minute session. So we, I encourage people to let's do this in chunks and segments that are uh, manageable and comfortable. They don't have to just come in and dump all at once. Um, other variables, um, you know, I do work with teens a lot, mm. and the teens are... Um, Kind of being, and that kind of, they're being preyed on by older people. Yes. So, what do you mean by that? Well, they're being preyed on by older people. So because we have this social media, our children are 24 hours, seven days a week, accessed by strangers. And some of those strangers are luring them in, you know, to malls and places. So again, you know, when the internet and the computer first came out, parents were very worried about it. And we gave our kids lots of education. And we said, you can't use MySpace. Remember MySpace? You can't use MySpace. Yeah. So we kind of fell off of having those conversations, but I recommend that parents go back and have those conversations because we have teen girls and teen boys really being preyed on, whether they're being lured into situations that are unsafe or they're being targeted or bullied or harassed online. So, you know, that online presence, it's always in the back of my mind. I mention it often. What age do you think is appropriate for, is it teens to start feeling uh, where they have their own, they, they are responsible to be on social media. I think the rules of those platforms are maybe 12 or 13. So parents should always follow whatever the age rule is per app that they're using. Um, but I like to start the conversation before that because okay. they're getting their hands on, you know, their parents' social media even before they have their own account. So we, we should educate them like about eight. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The brains are fresh. Uh, uh, these days, they're like, I, I mean, I don't know if you've seen it, but they're like casting Netflix onto the TV. I mean, they're just, they're, they're. Well, this is their world. Computers, this is their world. This is yeah. their world. They, move, they want everything yesterday. 
And we just need to let them know that they can shut the door. Okay. It's like if it's their house, if somebody's knocking, when do you answer? The same thing, but online. And th yeah. that's, we spoke earlier about boundaries. Yes. So that's another case of boundaries. What do you do? In, well, we will talk about that less, uh, later because I'm interested in seeing more of your photo of your artwork. With what multicultural or diverse populations have you worked? I, everybody, because it's Hawaii, okay. right? So we've got salad. I love it. Not so much a, a, a mix. It's, we're salad. So we're all mixed up in the same bowl. And it's, it's wonderful. But what I notice is that um, I don't get some of the ethnic minorities that maybe are more continental. So um, when people don't come in and identify themselves as ethnic Jews, for example, I just don't have that happen. Um, I don't have a lot of Middle Eastern clients because they're just not here in Hawaii. But the local populations that are in Hawaii, they come in. And, you know, when we're at school, they're like, you know, if you work with, and when we call it Asians, we actually break that up because it's a very different group and very different psychology. Sure. So we're studying, you know, history as much as we can. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time in Japan to learn as sensibly as I could about that culture and even the language. So um, we're overtly talking about culture and race. Those are actually two different things, but we do talk about them. Um, and people come in all the time. And what I'm really honored about is that people come in and uh, put it out there. They're like, okay, in my family, we're Korean, and this means da da da. And, you know, what do you think about that? And so it's part of the healing conversation because they know, we all know that we need our families oh, to support yeah. our healing, right? So they bring it all in. It's great. Well, you know, there's a stigma with African Americans about seeing psychologists and psychiatrists and. And has that changed a bit or now mm -hmm. we get it that we yeah. all need to speak to someone and nothing yeah. is wrong with it. Right, I think that right. we need to know that it's OK it's to so seek great. help. So in the last maybe five years, my caseload almost had in initially I've been doing this for maybe 20 years or so. So 95 mm, math is not my thing, but um, not no African-Americans on my panel. And I, you know, see maybe 40 people a week and there would be no black people on my panel at all. The last five years, they're coming more and more. Oh. And what I'm noticing about um, mostly women okay. is African-American women, professional women with master's degrees or more, oftentimes, or at least in some pursuit of education. And they're saying, what about me? You know, I want to take care of me. I hurt. I have fears. I have thoughts. I have an ache and a pain. And I'm going to take time because it, it takes time to come to therapy. You know, I'm going to take time for me so that I can better honor my family. And it's that, um, you know, my husband said, you know, that's a that's a it's a compliment that they're coming. And that that if is. I was if I was going to start crying, it would be because of that. I'm just really grateful that they're coming and really honoring themselves that way. You know? Absolutely. Because we'll just keep on shouldering without really stopping to, you know, put the balm on the and so they're coming and I shout out to all the women and, and the men too. My, I, I see a lot of men of all different ethnicities and backgrounds and talk about deers. They are so tender and they're so sensitive. And when they show up, my heart also breaks because they're like, I'm going to trust you to allow me to be vulnerable and yeah. maybe even cry. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 you and I talked about that. Yeah. That men should just open up a little more. Oh, they're and so it's okay. sweet. They're darling. They're just hurt, too. Yeah. Know. They're people, too. They, <laughs> come to find out. <laughs> okay. People, yeah, they too, they hurt. Yeah, yeah. They, have, they get depressed. Yeah. Um, they are overwhelmed. Well, I, when, I think as women, we're raised that we have to be strong. Yeah. Right? And, um, and that men are strong already, and they don't need anything. Yeah. So we can be pretty hard on them. And they were not often nice or soft or tender because we forget that they need that. They so do. we have a way of just kind of running them over. And they come in and they're just like, wow, man, she's so hard. Yeah, I, I'm getting it from the world. And yeah. then I have to come home and get it too. And then these kids, you know, who have been empowered to speak their mind, so they, need a, they need a little support. Yeah, because I noticed that the parents and I want to be the kid's best friend instead of the parent. That's yeah, a hip yeah. thing now. I'm just yeah, going to yeah. be on their level. No, no, no. I think yeah, yeah. children want parents. They need parents. Um, and, you know, and so you can still be parents and have a child that says, this is what I think. Yeah. So in the past, let's say you had a family of four, dad, mom, two kids. 
but and it was dad and mom making decisions. Now it's done by committee. And I don't, you know, I support that. I'm okay with that. It's just poor dads. They just need a little bit of support. Because sometimes they're the, they get the small piece of chicken. Oh, they get the small oh, piece do. of chicken. Yeah. I like that. What do you do in your spare time to relax? Right. Well, um, I do play tennis. I play, play some tennis. paddle tennis. Okay. Not necessarily very well, but I do it a couple times a week. I try to do some yoga and exercise, hang out with the kids. I'm an avid film and book uh, fan. I like reading um, specific genres. And, uh, but again, I said I like to tinker. So I do have a studio. Finally, I finally got oh, my garage look, turned tell into us a about, studio. Tell yeah, us yeah. about this painting. Okay, is that a mosaic? This or? is a mosaic, and her name is Flora, and she had a sister named Fauna, and, and they were sold at a show that I did in 2016. But um, she's a tiled uh, mosaic, and this, this is a, a glass mosaic. That, oh, it's um, beautiful. Her name is Ka'u, and Ka'u was inspired by the volcano uh, eruption on the big island and so I did do um, this this mosaic and for a while there I was actually making camera cases and selling like 50 percent you know for half of the camera case I would donate it to the American Red Cross to to do that relief and so if anybody's interested let me know and I hope you get to links and 50 percent of all these proceeds will go to American Red give Cross. us your link Oh, it's my website. Is your or, website? Or my, give us, give us the name me. of your website. And my email. Or you can reach me at dralanacoffee.com. Okay, yeah. dralanacoffee.com. <laughs> and what are you putting out of that little well, goodie bag right there? So this is what I do when I'm not in the studio, but I, I at home just, well, cooking, really. I, and I decided to make a fairy eggs. Oh, and that is, is beautiful. This is a, <gasps> Thank this is you. I love gifts. Oh, my gosh. Catch that. Yeah, Look I like at the that. idea of eggs and fertility. Oh, and, that is and beautiful. And the possibility that all things grow. Right next and, to Sister Power. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lana, oh. this has been absolutely thank, thank you so wonderful. much for having me really thank you yeah, and yeah. we need you you must come back i will you I must will. come Thanks back for having me. thank you for coming to sister power <laughs> in closing sister power offers this piece of advice know your worth then add tax because you are worth it know your worth know the difference between what you're getting and what you deserve Dare to be great and walk in faith. From mm -hmm. all of us at Think Tech Hawaii and Sister Power, thank you for spending part of your day with us. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough.